Hello students, in today's class we will discuss about power of lens and uh, how we apply that concept to understand uh, combination of lenses. So, when multiple lenses are placed adjacent to each other. So, what is the effective focal length of such a combination of lens clear. So, that is what we will be dealing with. So, let us start. So, first of all power power of lens or power of an optical device you can say. Okay. So, first of all uh, this power which we are going to discuss has nothing to do with uh, the power which we uh, discussed in uh, work power energy. So, that power is completely different. So, there in work power energy we discussed power as the rate at which work is being done on a system correct that is how we understand power or uh, rate at which a force delivers energy. So, that is how we understood power there it is just energy per time which is joule per second correct. So, forget about that that is not the power which we are going to discuss now this is optical power you can understand this as optical power. So, this is basically the ability of the device. So, we know that whenever we have a lens let us consider a convex lens in this scenario if light is incident on that lens in this manner. So, convex lens has the ability to converge those light rays. So, when I am talking about a parallel beam. So, this parallel beam will be converged by the convex lens correct. So, this is how it converges. Now, so power of a device is something which decides or which measures the ability of this lens to converge the light rays clear. So, is this lens doing a better job at converting the uh, sorry or converging the light rays or not. So, if it is able to converge easily then we say that the power is more clear. So, understand power with the ability to converge clear. So, that is a basic idea. So, if I consider another lens like this and if let us say parallel beam of light is incident on that lens as well and if I consider that this lens is converging the light rays in this manner. So, these parallel beam of light rays are converging at this position and here the light rays are converging at this position clear. So, you can easily say if this is lens 1 and this is lens 2. So, which of these two lenses is doing a better job at converging the light rays who is converging better. So, lens 1 or lens 2 who is easily converging the light rays. So, obviously, lens 1 correct. So, you can see that the lens 2 is only uh, deviating the light rays by a small angle if the light rays are traveling like this correct if they are traveling like this. So, the lens has only deviated them by a small angle and it is making them converge at this position right. Whereas, this lens if you observe if this is the parallel beam it is converging this light beam by a larger angle when compared with this a small angle here the angle of deviation produced by the lens is larger correct. So, power is basically a measure of that measure of how well a lens can converge the light rays. Obviously, I am discussing about convex lens. So, that is why I am talking about converging. So, otherwise power generally so is defined like this it is the ability of an optical device optical device or optical system you can say of an optical system to converge or diverge the light rays incident on it the light rays incident on it. Clear? So, that is how we understand the power of a device and as you can see. So, we, we can directly uh, relate this uh, power with the focal length of the lens. So, if you observe the first lens here. So, we can say that this length here will be the focal length of the first lens. So, let us call it as some f 1 and in this case uh, this length here will be the focal length of the second lens correct. So, let us call it as f 2. So, f 1 and f 2 will be the focal length of lens 1 and 2. So, now by looking at these two you already have understood that this lens has more power which also has less focal length less power 
more focal length. So, that is the idea right. So, we can say that higher the focal length, focal length if it is higher this will automatically imply that the power of that device is lower clear. So, that is the basic idea that is the first thing that should come to your mind. So, if the light ray is converging at a far away distance it means that it is not converging well correct. So, that is the basic idea. So, the reason why the focal length is lesser here is because this lens is converging these parallel beam of light rays better. So, it is easily converging. So, that is why the light rays are converging at a small distance clear. So, focal length is higher means power is lower and based on this we define the formula for power also. So, this is how we define it power of lens is defined as 1 by focal length clear. So, it is just the inverse of focal length and the unit for this power. So, unit of power is not watts once again it is as I told you optical power. So, unit of power is basically called diopters clear. So, it is denoted with a capital D. So, denoted with a capital D. Now, one thing you will have to understand here is that to obtain the power of a device in uh, diopters you will have to substitute the value of f in SI units which is in meters. So, if for example, let us say they give you that uh, this convex lens uh, has a focal length of 20 centimeters right. If they ask you what is the power of this device. So, then you should substitute it as 1 by uh, you should substitute the value of f in meters. So, when you substitute it in meters you will get 0.2 meters here and the value of this would be 5 d, d meaning diopters and always put a plus sign in front of it clear because this plus sign has a lot of meaning attached to it. So, we will see what it is. So, as I told you uh, f focal length can be positive or negative. So, if I take a convex lens which is a converging lens we have positive focal length which means positive power. Similarly, if I take a concave lens right, if I take a concave lens uh, you know that concave lens the focal length is generally negative. So, take some some value let us say minus 10 centimeters. So, if the focal length of that concave lens is minus 10 centimeters then to find the power of that lens I can write 1 by minus 0 0.1 meters. So, do not make the mistake of substituting in centimeters clear meters this will be equal to minus 10 diopters clear students. So, that is how we calculate the power of uh, a device and keep in mind that for convex lens generally the power will be positive. What do I mean by generally when we take a convex lens in a medium which is air which has surroundings having lesser refractive index. Otherwise, I have told you that if this is placed in a medium of higher refractive index this will start behaving like a diverging lens and focal length becomes negative power becomes negative right. So, that is the idea. So, we define like this power of a lens is basically defined as 1 by f and we also have another formula for power of mirror or let me explain that in the next board clear. So, first of all you can note this down. So, that is the basic idea about power right. So, convex lens converging device has positive power, concave lens diverging device has negative power clear. So, students uh, we can write the power of lens as 1 by f and the power of mirror as minus 1 by f. So, mirror also has a power because you know that a mirror a spherical mirror also can converge or diverge a light ray or a beam of light rays correct. So, any system which can converge or diverge will have a power associated with it and you will understand why we have this negative sign here and why do we have plus 1 by f here and minus 1 by f here right. So, let us see the reason for that. See the first idea about power that you will have to keep in mind is that all converging devices all converging devices have 
positive power. So that is how we define power also. So any device which is able to converge the light rays will be associated with a positive power. Positive means converging, clear? Similarly, all diverging devices, all diverging devices have negative power. Now you already know generally what comes under converging devices, we have discussed this earlier, right? So let me write it down like this. So con, what is that? Converging, right? So convex lens and concave mirror, concave mirror. So these are converging devices. So these are the two devices which have a positive power, clear? Similarly, negative power means diverging devices. Which are the devices having a diverging nature? Concave lens will diverge a parallel beam. Similarly, convex mirror also. I have told you in one of the earlier classes that the behavior of these two will be exactly similar. Even the image formation and all the nature of the images formed by these two will be exactly similar and by these two also will be exactly similar, right? So is power, right? So power of these two will be positive because they are converging devices and power of these two will be negative because they are diverging devices. So that is how we define power. Now, if I talk about why we have this negative sign, keep in mind that if I consider let us say a convex mirror. So this is a convex mirror, you all know that. So when a parallel beam of light is incident on this convex mirror, so we can easily say that because of its nature, this light ray will get reflected back in this manner, correct? So we know that the center of curvature will be on this side, which means focus will also be on this side. So if I ask you, what is the focal length of convex mirror? You can easily tell, is it positive or negative? So this is the mirror light is travelling in this direction, whereas focus will be on the same side, on the same side to the right side, right? So we can easily say that the focal length is positive for concave mirror, sorry, con, uh, convex mirror, correct? So as you can see from the diagram, so focal length is positive. But what is its nature? Its nature is diverging, right? So its nature is diverging. So this mirror having a positive focal length has diverging nature which means negative power. So that is why for defining power of a mirror, we will be putting a negative sign over here. Is that clear students? Otherwise, the magnitude of power will be the same manner. So generally how I remember is I do not worry about this sign at all. I will not even look at uh, the sign because you will definitely get confused if you remember it as 1 by, uh, 1 by f and minus 1 by f which one to use for lens and which one to use for mirror. So generally how I remember is by using this definition that converging devices have positive power and diverging devices have negative power. I know that the power of any device will have a magnitude of 1 by f or 1 by mod f, correct? So magnitude of power is this, there is no doubt whether it is a lens or whether it is a mirror or any other optical system, for any optical system we define power in this manner, the magnitude of power. Should I put a positive sign here or a negative sign here depends on whether that system is a converging system or a diverging system. So that is what I generally do and I would suggest you follow the same method because I have seen many of you getting confused uh, about which one to use where. So for one for lens sometimes you will be putting minus, for mirror sometimes you will be putting plus or you might forget to put. Uh, the correct sign. So, forget about all those worries and just remember the magnitude as 1 by mod f and depending on what the nature of the device is, you know that right, which are converging devices, convex lens and concave mirror are converging devices. Similarly, concave lens and convex mirror are diverging devices. So, based on that, you can put, you can decide what the sign here should be, clear? So, that would be a better scenario. So, that is the idea students. And as I told you, we can define power for any optical system. You can define power for a system which is like this also. So let us say we have something like this. So this whole thing is a medium. So if this whole thing is some medium, right? 
and if parallel beam of light is incident on this. So, depending on the final light rays coming out of this, whether the light rays are converging or whether they are diverging. So, we can decide what is the power of that system. So, any system which can converge or diverge a beam of light rays, uh, we can associate a power with such systems clear. So, if I ask you a question like this, if let us say we have a glass lab. So, I have a glass lab like this clear. If I ask you what is the power of this glass lab, what will be the answer for that? So, power of this glass lab, if I if a parallel beam of light is incident on this in this manner, what happens to that? Will that light rays be converged or diverged on the other side? No, this has no ability to converge or diverge the light rays correct, which means the power of this is 0 or if you want to define the focal length of this device that would be infinity. Is that clear students? You can take a beam which is at some angle also, whichever angle you take the light rays coming out of it will not be deviated or will not be converged or diverged. If the light rays are incident in this manner, they might we know that lateral displacement occurs right. So, which means this light ray might not exactly come out along this line, it will be shifted by some distance, but it will still be in the same direction. So, it would be something like this. Clear? So, if you see the incident beam uh, and the final emerging beam. So, you will understand that the incident beam and emergent beam are parallel to each other. There is no converging nature for this beam correct. So, that is why we say that for a glass slab. So, this is for a glass slab the power would be 0 clear students. So, that is how we identify that. Now, we can also consider a scenario like this. For example, let us say I have given you a situation like this where I have a lens which is something like this. So, this is the shape of the lens. right. So, if the lens has a shape which is like this and let us say the radius of curvature of this side is r 1 and radius of curvature of this side is r 2. So, what will you do if I ask you what is the power of this lens? what is the power of this lens. So, you will first find the focal length right for, for finding focal length we will directly use the lens makers formula mu lens by mu naught minus 1 into 1 by r 1 minus 1 by r 2 correct students. So, you will use the lens makers formula you will find the power sorry find the focal length and inverse of that is power. So, can I say that whatever I am writing here 1 by f in lens makers formula is directly the value of power itself right. So, whatever term 1 by f which we have is basically the value of power, but remember r 1 and r 2 should be in meters ok. Anyways, what I am uh, asking you here is just like I have understood the case of glass lab right. If in this case also the radius of curvature of both the surfaces this curvature and this curvature. So, if the radius of curvature are same both are r what would be the power of this device can you guess or can you calculate. So, what would be the radius of sorry what would be the power of a device which is like this having same curvature same nature. So, on this side also it is bent like this on that side also it is bent like this clear. So, for such a scenario what is the power what should be the answer for that. So, which means what I am asking is if a parallel beam of light is incident onto a system which is like this, will that light rays converge or diverge or something else will happen. So, to understand that you will have to apply the formula right. So, now if you look at this formula because this is r what are plus r or minus r for this surface should I substitute plus r or minus r for this I should substitute plus r because the surface is like this center is on that side correct. Similarly, for this surface also center is on that side. So, plus. So, now if you look at that if I calculate the value of 1 by f I would be getting this would be a constant some constant do not worry and what do I get here 1 by r minus 1 by r both are having same r same sign which means I would be getting a 0 here correct students. 
So that is what does that mean? When I am getting 1 by f is equal to 0, it means power of this device will be equal to 0, which means even this device will have no ability to converge or diverge a beam of light, just like a glass lab. Clear? So, glass lab cannot converge or diverge. Similarly, a lens which has same curvature, same radius on both the sides also cannot converge a beam of light rays. So, in this case what happens is that maybe the light ray will bend here slightly, even here also the light ray might bend something like this, but eventually they will come out parallelly itself. Do you understand what I am saying? So, that is the basic idea here. So, these two devices a glass lab and a lens which has same radius of curvature on either side will have no ability to converge or diverge the light rays. And how can we say that? By looking at the focal length or the power of the device. So, power is 0 means no ability to converge or diverge. Clear? Students, let us solve these questions now. So, here they have given an object is placed 30 centimeters away from a lens having a power of minus 5 diopters. Find the magnification and the nature of image formed. So, by looking at minus sign here, I can understand that it is a concave lens, correct. So, let me draw that lens first. So, we have a convex sorry concave lens of power minus 5 diopters. So, which means I can write 1 by f is equal to minus 5, correct students. So, when I uh, find the value of f, I would be getting the value of f as how much? 1 by 5, which is 0 0.2 or minus 0 0.2 uh, meters, which is equivalent to minus 20 centimeters, correct. And we already got it with negative sign because concave lens will always have negative focal length, right? Okay, so 20 centimeters is the focal length of that lens. Okay, now they have told that the object is placed 30 centimeters away from the lens. So let's say the object is over here. It is at a distance of 30 centimeters. Clear? So now they are asking us to find out what happens to the final image formed. So if I draw the ray diagram. If I take two light rays, so this light ray will get further diverged because the light rays are already diverging and if they pass through a diverging lens, they will further diverge, correct. So, you can see they are already diverging, further diverge. So, that is what happens. So, we can clearly say that the image will be formed over here. So, let us see. So, if I write the uh, lens formula, what is it? How should I write it? 1 by V minus 1 by can I substitute u as minus 30 because it is on this side. So, minus 30 is equal to 1 by f, f should be taken as minus 20 for a concave lens. So, now when I simplify this, this becomes plus when this goes to the other side, I would get 1 by v is equal to uh, minus 1 by 20 minus 1 by 30, correct. So, simplifying this will give me v is equal to how much will this be minus of 30 into 20 by 30 plus 20 which is 50. So, 0 and 0 gets cancelled 5 ones and 5 6, 6 twos 12. So, minus 12 centimeters. So, this length here where the image will be formed will be 12 centimeters correct. So, that is how we can understand. So, they are asking us to find the magnification and the nature of image formed. So, magnification calculation is very simple, we know that it is V by U and what is the value of V which we got here minus 12 and what is the value of U that we got which we have minus 30. So, substitute with signs minus and minus gets cancelled 6 1s sorry 6 2s and 6 5s. So, 2 by 5 and we got a positive value means diminished image and you can see that the image is formed not by actual convergence of refracted rays, but by extension of them backwards, correct. So, this is a virtual diminished erect image, erect because plus. So, let me write it down. So, the final image will be virtual erect and diminished. So, that is it students. So, that is how we should understand the concept of power, right. So, I have just converted that into focal length and just applied uh, the lens formula, 
Okay. So, now let us see this question. So, here on this side if you see uh, that they have given two lengths right. So, if you represent the, the representation which you see here is how we represent a uh, lens. So, if the arrow marks are like this. So, as you see here this represents a convex lens or a converging lens. So, whenever we have a converging uh, device or lens we represent it with arrow marks a straight line and arrow marks like this instead of always drawing uh, a diagram like this. So, with for a convex lens. So, what we will do is we will just represent it with a line and if the arrow marks are this way it is converging, if the arrow marks are this way it is diverging clear that is just a representation which is generally used. Okay. So, now what they have given here is this is the incident beam a parallel beam of light is incident. So, this is incident beam. Okay. So, they have given that the first lens which is a convex lens has a power of plus 4 diopters correct plus 4 diopters. So, from this I can easily say that the focal length of this lens will be 25 centimeters correct. So, 1 by 4 I would be getting, but 1 by 4 will be meters. So, 1 by 4 meters is same as 25 centimeters correct. So, the focal length of this is 25 centimeters. Now, they have told that this length is 15 centimeters, the second lens is placed at a distance of 15 centimeters. Now, see the question what they are asking us is to find the power of the second lens. So, that the effective power of the combination is 0. So, find the power of the second lens. So, that the effective power of the combination is 0. Now, first understand what this means effective power of combination is 0. What does that mean? So, if I look at this th both put together as one system. So, the effective power of both put together should be 0. So, when will effective power of anything if let us say this is my system whatever is inside I am not worried about that. When do I say that the power of this is 0? When it neither converges nor diverges a beam of light rays which means if a parallel beam of light is incident onto it the final beam coming out of that should also be parallel correct. So, the final beam which is coming out of that should also be parallel. So, this is when I say that whatever is inside this has an effective power of 0 clear students. So, that is what they are asking here. So, we can say that this light beam. So, please observe closely what I am uh, doing here. So, this beam when it falls onto this convex lens this converges correct. So, let me draw the ray diagram. So, it converges in this manner right. You understood why I have taken it till here because the focal length is 25 centimeters whereas, this length is only 15 centimeters. So, let me uh, erase that I will write it down again for you. So, now in this case this is the diverging lens. Now, observe carefully. So, this light rays after passing through the first lens are converging because this is a converging lens, but as I told you by the time they come out of this finally, how should they be they should become parallel right. So, which means can I say that if I make this dotted line. So, you all understood why I am doing it as a dotted line right, because the light which is striking the second lens appears to converge here, which means can I say that this position acts as a virtual object for the second lens correct. So, the light rays are incident onto the second lens and you can easily see that the two light rays are converging converging incident rays. I have told you this many times we have discussed this all many times earlier also whenever the incident beam is a converging beam the object is an virtual object. So, for this second lens this is an virtual object. Now, what do we need for the power to be 0? I can say that this converging beam of light rays should be diverged by this lens in such a way that it finally becomes parallel. Do you understand that students? So, this is the basic uh, idea the concept which I have to use. So, for that to happen I need to find out uh, the power of this lens correct. Now, 
So, please observe carefully. So, these two light rays are converging at this position. So, we already know that this is 15 which means how much will this length be can you tell that is nothing but 25 this whole length is 25 minus 15 which is 10 centimeters correct. Okay. Now, think properly and tell me if I have a convex concave lens and a converging beam of light is incident. So, where should the converging beam appear to converge such that the light rays become parallel? You know this already right. So, the incident beam should appear to converge at focus. So, that after the lens diverges this converging beam. So, this converging beam will be diverged by the lens and it will eventually become parallel. So, this position of convergence should be the focus of this lens clear. So, which means this point should be the focus of this lens which means this 10 centimeters should be the focal length of this lens. Focal length should be equal to 10 centimeters is that clear students. So, this converging beam will appear to converge here, but eventually this diverging lens it will make this converging beam into a diverging uh, manner it will diverge that and make it parallel clear. So, that is what should happen in this scenario. So, what should be the power if the focal length is 10 centimeters then the power should be 1 by 0 0.1, but remember it is a diverging lens. So, put a negative sign. So, this should be equal to minus 10 diopters clear. So, if the second lens has a power of minus 10 diopters then it behaves like a uh, I mean the final light rays which are coming out will be in the form of a parallel beam of light rays clear. See the idea is pretty simple here what we have done is this parallel beam which is incident is also coming out as a parallel beam correct. So, once we have identified that rest is just uh, taking the image of this first lens as the object for the second lens clear and then making it parallel. So, you can solve this uh, without the ray diagram by just writing the equations also, but I guess this method would be a better one clear by understanding it through ray diagrams it would be a better one clear. So, students now let us understand the concept of combination of lens clear. So, which means uh, we are going to have many lens which are placed adjacent to each other and we need to find out what is the effective focal length of that system. So, for example, let us say we have uh, a lens like this another lens which is placed just adjacent to it another lens which is placed adjacent to it. So, all of them are grouped together. So, without any gaps right. So, we have many lens which are combined joined together. So, in such a scenario if I have to view this whole system as one single lens what should be the effective focal length of that clear. So, that is what we will be learning here. So, combination of lens. So, here the idea which we will be using is pretty simple. For example, let us take the scenario which I have drawn here. So, we have uh, three lens as you can see. So, this is lens 1 this is lens 2 and this is lens 3. Okay. Now, <laughs> the concept that we will be using here is that whenever a light ray is incident on this system of n number of lens it need not be 3 clear it can be any number it just understand it as one particular case. So, if a light ray is incident on this combination can I say that this light ray will be either uh, deviated upwards or downwards depending on uh, the power of the first lens correct and after that it falls on to the second lens and depending on the power of the second lens it will once again be deviated either upwards or downwards and then it falls on to the third lens and same thing upwards or downwards. So, it is decided by the power of that lens. So, eventually by the time the light ray comes out whether it comes like this or whether it comes out like this depends on the net power of this system clear. So, this light ray will experience the power of the first lens, power of the second lens, power of the third lens and then come out. So, finally, when it is coming out will it deviate downwards or whether it will deviate upwards depends on what the effective power of this system. So, in such a case when 
multiple thin lens multiple thin lens are in contact with each other are in contact with each other the effective power of that combination of that combination will be the sum of individual powers of lens clear so that is the concept which we will be using so in this case it can be any number of lens which are uh, joined together or which are in contact with each other so we can say that the net power p effective will be equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus so on n number of lens you can write it n times right so this is the expression which we use so by using the same expression we can also uh, write the relation between the focal lengths as well so if this one has a focal length of f1 second one has a focal length of f2 and third one has a focal length of f3 and if you have to replace the whole apparatus with one single lens you can find the effective focal length of that lens clear so how do we write the effective focal length by using power i can write power effective as 1 by effective focal length correct inverse of that so this should be equal to power 1 how do i write power 1 power 1 is basically 1 by focal length of 1 plus power 2 will be 1 by focal length of 2 plus power 3 will be 1 by focal length of 3 plus so on so if you have to find the relation between focal lengths this is the one if you have to find the effective power then this is the one so the basic idea is that as i told you earlier the light ray which is incident on that combination whether it behaves in a converging manner if you take a beam so whether it behaves in a converging manner or in a diverging manner depends on the net power created by this system right so that is this relation p effective is power 1 power 2 power 3 so on sum of all those whereas when it comes to focal length you will be taking 1 by that because that is how power is defined clear so now based on this idea let us uh, solve a simple uh, question so first lens is something like this a convex lens and let's say the second one is a concave lens and the third one is a convex lens something like this so let's say the power of the first lens is um plus 2 diopters power of the second lens is let's say 4 diopters but because it is concave we should consider negative right so minus 4 diopters clear and this third lens instead of giving the power let's say they have given us the focal length and the focal length of that is uh, some 20 cm clear so this is the information that is given to us regarding these three lens clear now if there is an object which is placed here let's say the distance here is some 20 cm again so this is where the object is so right so the situation is clear we have three lens convex concave convex and uh, power of the first lens is 2 diopters power of the second lens is minus 4 diopters third one has focal length of 20 cm object is at 20 cm find the location of image location of image and its nature okay so first of all we need to replace this whole system with one effective lens correct so i don't know whether that is a convex lens or a concave lens so for now i'll just put a box okay so based on one side uh, derive the effective focal length based on that i'll replace this with uh, a convex lens or a concave lens so for now i don't know what it is so from this this object is at a distance of 20 cm so first let us find out what is the effective power of this combination so i can write p effective is equal to power of the first lens which is plus 2 
power of the second lens minus 4 power of the third lens. So, third lens is a convex lens. So, it will have positive power right because it is a converging device and magnitude of that would be 1 by 0.2 correct 1 by 0.2 meters which will be plus 5. Clear students? So, that is the expression which we get. So, solving this will give me the value of effective power as a 7 minus 4 which is 3 diopters plus and plus sign here indicates that I have to replace this whole combination with one single lens and will that lens be con uh, converging or diverging? Plus means converging. So, it can be replaced with a convex lens in this manner and what will be the focal length of that convex lens effective focal length? inverse of this. What is inverse of this? So, focal length effective will be 1 by 3 meters clear. So, 1 by 3 meters which is nothing but 100 by 3 centimeters. So, that is it. So, that would be the focal length you know the focal length you know the object distance find the image distance clear you can do that. So, please complete this. So, write the lens formula for this and find the image location and also write down its nature. So, I want to see that in your notes. Students, uh, next concept we will be discussing is silvering of lens, right. So, it basically means that whenever we have a lens whose one surface is made reflecting. So, it means that the light rays which are incident onto that combination I mean onto that system will first pass through the lens eventually get reflected from that surface and then come back right. So, how do we deal with such scenarios is what we are going to understand. So, first let us try to solve this for a simple case let us take a convex lens like this uh, and let us silver this surface. So, if this surface of the lens the outside surface of the lens is silvered it means that the inside surface of that will become reflecting. Correct? Do you understand that? So, this inside surface will become reflecting which means as the light passes through this lens. So, after reaching this surface it would not refract outside it will get reflected backwards clear. So, that is what we mean by silvering of lens. So, it is basically mirroring. So, we have converted this second surface of the lens into a mirror. Do you understand that? Clear? Okay. Now, how we would understand this particular scenario? is we will be viewing it as one complete lens. So, whatever lens which we have there. So, we can view it as one complete lens in this manner and you can assume that there is a small air gap between these two. So, there is a small air gap like this and then there is a mirror and then there is a mirror. So, you can understand this combination of or this lens with one surface silvered as one complete lens small gap and one complete mirror. So, both will be identical to each other in their behavior and the reason is because see I have told you earlier also that in one of the questions or one of the concepts which we discussed I have drawn something which is like this a lens which is like this with same radius on both the sides when we have same radius on both the sides will such a device converge or diverge the light beam? No right the power of such a device will be 0 as long as this interface and this interface have same curvature. So, that is not going to affect the path of the light rays correct. So, which means even in between if you assume that in between this lens and mirror if I place a small air gap like this which you can see here. So, a small air gap will that air gap going to uh, affect the light rays which are passing through that system no right. So, which means I can assume this system to behave similar to this system clear. So, that is how we will be understanding such cases and based on this we will be writing the effective power of this system. So, please observe carefully this is very very important. Now, think about what will happen to a light ray which is incident on to this. So, if there is a light ray which is incident on to this what is going to happen to that light ray. So, what I will do is I will use this system to understand. So, when a light ray is incident on this system. So, first the convex lens will converge the light ray correct 
it will then fall on to the mirror and the mirror will once again converse the light ray and that light ray should once again pass through the lens and then finally come out something like this will happen so please observe think of yourself as traveling along the light ray and think what are all you are experiencing so first the light ray passes through the lens so it experiences the power of the lens then it falls onto the mirror it experiences the power power in the sense the converging or diverging nature of that mirror then while coming back it is once again passing through the lens which means it will experience the power of the lens once again right so in such a scenario if i have to write what is the effective power what should i write that should be equal to it is passing through the lens twice keep that in mind while going forward it is experiencing the power of lens while coming backward also it is experiencing the power of lens whereas the mirror it is only getting reflected once so it is experiencing the power of mirror once clear so in this case what we can write is the effective power is 2 times the power of lens plus 1 time the power of mirror so this is the expression which we will be writing so that is the concept of silvering of lens so whatever is that final silvered surface the light ray undergoes deviation from that surface only once whereas all the other lens system in front of it once forward once backward so that's why we are getting this two term here clear so it is experiencing the power of the lens twice whereas power of mirror only once clear students so that is a basic idea and as i told you earlier so whenever you are substituting the values here make sure that the power values are being substituted with proper signs so check clearly whether the con the devices which are given to you they are converging devices or diverging devices clear students so let us solve this question itself right so let us consider that this lens has let's say it is a equi convex lens so that is an equi convex lens right with both the surfaces this surface and this surface having a radius of curvature of 20 cm and mu of 3 by 2 so this outside medium is air that's it clear so that is the information given to us we have an equi convex lens radius of 20 cm mu of 3 by 2 what do we need to find now is find the effective focal length of this combination which means if i silver one of the surface clear if i take a equi convex lens of this parameters and if i silver one surface what will this whole system now behave as what will be the effective focal length of that system is what we have to calculate clear so let's solve that but before that let me add one more point to this we now understood how to find the effective power of the system and once we find effective power inverse of that will be the effective focal length but keep in mind that whenever one of the surfaces of the lens is silvered the effective the effective optical device the effective optical device should be considered as a mirror correct students because you see what is this system don't worry about what is here what is this system eventually going to do if a light ray is passing through it or if a light ray is incident on it will it send that light ray to the other side or will it send it back to the same medium effectively what is going to happen the light ray is effectively going to come back into the same system who does that will a lens do that will a lens send the light ray back into the same medium no right so this whole combination will effectively behave like a lens or a mirror a mirror right because the light ray is going to come back so that is the basic idea right so that is what i have written here the effective optical device should be considered as a mirror and the focal length of that mirror can be found out by using this idea so did, i hope you all understood this relation so it passes through all the lenses if there is here i have taken one lens if there are multiple lenses first lens second lens mirror 
second lens, first lens, outside. Clear? So, all the lenses will be experiencing or giving their powers twice. So, that is why we have this expression, right, students? Okay, fine. So, this is the idea. So, let us find out what is the effective focal length of this combination. So, let us do that. So, I will erase this part. Okay, so, now in this scenario, first I will find the focal length of the lens clear I know how to do that I have lens makers formula. So, first I will apply lens makers formula to find the focal length of lens. So, 1 by f l is equal to tell me the value I should write mu l by mu naught 3 by 2 by 1 which is 3 by 2 minus 1 into you know that for a convex lens this is 20 and this is minus 20 right. So, 20 because center is on this side minus 20 because center is on this side. So, 1 by 20 minus 1 by minus 20. Clear students? R 1 is 20, R 2 is minus 20, right? Okay. So, I will be getting 1 by F L is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 by 20 plus 1 by 20 is 1 by 10. So, which means solving this will eventually give me the value of focal length of lens as 20 centimeters right or if you want you can directly calculate the power here. So, what is the power of the lens power of lens is equal to how much inverse of this right 1 by 0 0.2. So, 1 by 0 0.2 meters which is plus 5 diopters done. So, I have completed the power of lens. Now, remember what is the expression for effective power in this case we have just derived 2 times power of lens plus 1 time power of mirror. So, this will be equal to 2 times of plus 5 diopters plus power of mirror. What is the expression I told you for power of mirror? For any device power is nothing but 1 by focal length. So, for this mirror also if you look at this mirror you know the radius of the mirror right radius of this mirror is same as radius of the second surface which we already know as 20 centimeters. So, from this I can understand that radius of mirror radius of mirror is also same radius of mirror is also equal to 20 centimeters right students. Now, if the radius of mirror is 20 what is the focal length of mirror? you know that focal length of a mirror is nothing but r by 2 clear. So, which means focal length of that mirror will be 10 centimeters right, but so based on that we got the focal length. Now, what should I substitute here power of mirror? So, power of mirror the focal length of that is 10 centimeters which means the value I should substitute here should be 1 by 0 0.1 and as I told you I have not worried about the sign of power here, but now I should think about sign. Should I put a positive power or negative power here? I told you how to think about power. I am not substituting any formula. So, you know that power of mirror is generally considered to be minus 1 by f. I am not thinking about that. So, do not worry about that. I have just calculated the focal length. I converted that into power. Now, I will think whether that is positive or negative clear. Now, what type of a device is this mirror? It is a concave mirror and what does a concave mirror do? Will it converge or diverge? If a parallel beam is incident on a concave mirror, so concave mirror will converge right. This is what will happen right. So, let me draw it bigger. So, if light rays are incident in this manner, so these light rays will converge in this manner. So, concave mirror is a converging device which means this power should be a positive power. So, this is this should be plus. So, you can think of it like that. So, do not worry about the formula right as I told you just find the magnitude of power then think about the sign. So, that is it students. So, when I simplify this I will get uh, 2 into 5 is plus 10 1 by 0 0.1 is also plus 10 which is plus 20 centimeters sorry sorry plus 20 diopters clear. So, 20 diopters will be the effective power which means effective focal length 
will be how much 1 by 20 meters which is nothing but 5 centimeters clear so now this whole system where is that yeah so this whole system will behave as one single mirror which is having a focal length of plus sorry which is having a focal length of 5 centimeters now this whole system if i ask you to replace with one mirror will you replace it with a concave mirror or will you replace it with a convex mirror that is also something which we'll have to think about right so i know that this should be replaced with a mirror i know how to calculate the focal length of that mirror now how should what mirror should it be should it be a concave mirror or a convex mirror so that is something which will once again be understood by looking at power power is positive power is positive means the final device should be a converging device correct positive value of power means converging so out of these two which is the converging device concave mirror is the converging device so you will strike this off and finally say that this is how this effective combination behaves it behaves like a mirror whose focal length is 5 centimeters so this should be the answer clear students so that is the idea so it is a very simple concept so please observe what we have done so there are two rules which we will have to follow one is the expression for effective power second one is always replace that with a mirror and depending on whether the devices are converging or diverging you can decide what device should it be replaced with clear So, students that is about uh, silvering of lens. So, there are still a lot of examples which we will have to uh, solve different types of models to be uh, covered uh, even in the concept of silvering of lens. But for now, we do not have uh, that much time. We will discuss these uh, examples once again later on. Uh, today, we will be ending optics because from tomorrow, you will be writing your uh, exams. right? So, we will we'll just go through all the concepts which we have once, all the remaining concepts. So, there are very few more concepts. So, the practice on these uh, topics we will once again do it, right. So, do not worry about that, clear. So, just let us uh, go through what are the other concepts which we have. So, after this the next thing we can learn about is what happens when we cut a lens, clear. So, for example, if I have a lens, let us say a convex lens. So, now if I cut this lens, what happens to the focal length of the lens? So, let me write it down as focal length of a lens which is cut, which is cut. Okay. Now, once again, so if let us say there are light rays which are incident in this manner onto this convex lens. So, we know that each and every part of this uh, convex lens will have the same nature which means this light ray will be converged here, this light ray will be reaching here, this light ray here, so this light ray here, this light ray here. So, I have told you this in the case of mirrors also, even if I cut this lens into many parts like this, so let us say I am slicing that lens in this manner, so I have cut that, you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I have cut that into 5 parts. So, we can still say that if they are cut, but they are not moved, these light rays will still behave and converge in the same manner, right. And the reason is because each and every part of this lens, uh, the first surface has the same curvature, second surface has the same curvature, first surface has the same, second surface has the same. So, in that manner, even this has the same radius of curvature, this has the same radius of curvature as the earlier scenario, correct. So, by cutting the lens in this manner, parallel to the principal axis, you cannot change the focal length of the lens. So, that is a very important point. Let me write it down. Focal length of a lens does not change, does not change when it is cut parallel to principal axis, parallel to principal axis.
clear students so that is one thing which you'll have to keep in mind so how many ever pieces you do by cutting it like this so its focal length is not going to change right okay now moving on to the next part what happens if i cut the lens perpendicular to the principal axis so let's say i have a lens like this and now i have sliced that lens like this perpendicularly in such a way that it has now become two lens in this manner this is one part and this is the other part now in this scenario what is going to happen will the focal length change or not yes it changes because if you see here if this surface has a curvature of r and this surface also has a curvature of r if i consider an equi convex lens now after i cut it you can see that for this first lens this curvature is r whereas the second curvature is infinity right so the curvature of the lens is changing you know that the focal length of a lens will depend on the curvature right mu l by mu surrounding minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 right mu is not changing fine but r1 and r2 are changing one of these is changing when i cut a lens perpendicular to the principal axis do you understand what i'm saying so by cutting it like this maybe one of the surfaces is the same but the second surface is now becoming a plane correct so which will automatically mean that its focal length will change clear so focal length of the lens changes so in this case focal length changes when lens is cut perpendicular to principal axis so that is the idea students and you can even calculate what is the what is the individual focal length of these two lens also it is pretty simple so if let's say it is given that if we have a lens like this which has a focal length of f so let's say this is an equi convex lens so the focal length of this is f not okay so we have an equi convex lens having a focal length of f not now this was broken down into two lens one is like this and the other one is like this we have cut it exactly at the center vertically so now we can by symmetry we can say that uh, this will be f and this will also be f both will have same focal length correct now what is the value or what is the relation between f and f not so if the initial focal length of this complete lens is f not by cutting it vertically and separating it into two lenses what will be the focal length of the effective each individual lens so can you try this can you think about that okay so let me tell you so in the first case i can write if i apply lens makers formula 1 by f not is equal to uh, mu l by mu not minus 1 into what do i write on the other side 1 by r minus minus 1 by r correct 1 by r minus minus 1 by r which will eventually become 2 by r correct students so write it on your own think about that you will eventually understand that so this is not that difficult so 2 by r right now so if i simplify this uh, you can say that if you want you can simplify and write f not as what do you get mu not into r divided by 2 into mu l minus mu not correct that is what we'll be getting so please observe closely that is what you'll be getting so i've just rearranged the terms now if i take one of these lens so let's say the left left side lens and if i write lens makers formula for this so let's see what i'll get so 1 by f is equal to so the first term will be the same so mu l by mu not minus 1 into what about the second term so this will be 1 by r minus 1 by infinity right so 1 by r minus 1 by infinity is just 1 by r so that's it so when you simplify this what do you get so see here there is 2 here there is no 2 here that is the only difference rest is same correct so if you want you can directly divide these two expressions so this is expression 1 and expression 2 you can directly divide these two right or you can find the value of f so 
if I rearrange the terms in this expression, I will get the value of f as, so the denominator will be mu naught into r by the numerator part would be mu l minus mu naught. So, that is it. So, now if you observe these two f naught and f, you can clearly say that the value of f is double this value correct. So, you have a 2 in the denominator here and there is no 2 here. So, which means this into 2 is this. So, from this I can say that f is equal to 2 f naught. So, which means when you cut that equiconvex lens perpendicularly along uh, this line, you are basically dividing that into two lengths and each lens will have a focal length of double the original lens clear. Remember do not think that if it is becoming half focal length also becomes half right. What becomes half here when I am cutting this lens what is becoming half power is becoming half. So, you can actually understand this result by using that concept also please see here we know that if this is one lens and this is the other lens. So, instead of thinking this system or this situation as cutting this lens and obtaining two different lenses or two separate lenses, I will think of it in the reverse manner. What is the reverse manner? I have two lenses, I am combining them and obtaining this lens and I can apply effective focal length formula. What is the formula for effective focal length? 1 by f effective is equal to 1 by f 1 plus 1 by f 2. You remember this right, we have just discussed effective power is p 1 plus p 2, which means effective focal length 1 by effective focal length is 1 by f 1 plus 1 by f 2. So, what I am telling you now is that we can think of it in the reverse manner like this. We have two identical lenses, I am combining them to form this lens. So, if can I say that the effective combination of f and f should give me f naught that is it. So, that is what I will apply here. So, I would be getting 1 by f naught is equal to 1 by f plus 1 by f. See very simple right. So, I would be getting 1 by f naught is equal to 2 by f. So, solving that also will give you the same relation which we earlier derived which is f is equal to 2 f naught clear students. So, that is the idea about what happens when a lens is cut. So, if it is cut parallel to principal axis, no change in the focal length, if it is, if it is uh, cut perpendicular to the principal axis. So, this is how you calculate the focal length. It is becoming double because it was a equiconvex lens. So, if the radius of curvature was different, then you cannot use this right. You cannot directly say that it will be double. You will have to write lens makers formula for each part separately and then calculate the focal length right. So, just just get an idea about this like I told you we will solve questions on this later on. So, not now. So, students uh, the last concept which we will be uh, discussing would be about the velocity of image and the relation of that with the velocity of object. So, like we have done in all the earlier cases. So, I will not be doing the derivation now right. So, we have done that in all the earlier cases right. So, what I am going to do is I will give you the result if you want we will derive this later on once this uh, exams are over I will once again uh, discuss that. So, for now just understand how we are getting that expression. So, you remember how we derived longitudinal magnification right. So, when we derived this expression for longitudinal magnification we got the value as m square and this m square we derived it by using the concept of d v by d u. Remember this is also similar to that. We know that velocity of image is nothing but d v by d t. So, this is velocity of image this is uh, cap let us represent this with v of image distance. Okay. So, this v and this v are different this is image distance this is velocity of image. Okay. So, similarly I can write velocity of object as d u by d t correct students. So, you see here if I divide these two expressions I am once again getting d v by d u whose value which we already derived earlier. So, from this I can directly say velocity of image by velocity of object is equal to m square clear. 
and obviously this is a result which is applicable for motion along principal axis along principal axis. So, when the object is moving along the principal axis if you have to find the velocity of image. So, you just find the velocity of object multiply that with m square which is the magnification at that position clear. So, that is the idea. So, when I am relating the velocity along principal axis I will use longitudinal magnification when I am relating the velocity perpendicular to principal axis you know this right for velocity perpendicular to principal axis. So, we can say velocity of image by velocity of object will be m which is lateral magnification. So, that is the idea. So, you can just note it down for now right. So, even for during your practice I will not give you many uh, difficult questions on this we will we'll just learn the basics for now and we will discuss more about this later on clear. So, do not worry. So, this is basically velocity of image. So, along principal axis you will be using m square for perpendicular to principal axis you will be using m clear. So, keep that in mind. So, students uh, with that we will end this uh, topic. So, as I told you the last part of lens we can discuss that once again we can solve many questions based on that ok after your exams are over ok all the best.